Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the course Electricity and Electric Circuits. In this video we would like to introduce Kirchhoff's first law which is also known as the node theorem. And the basic tenet of this theorem is that if you have a node in your electric circuit then the amount of currents flowing into the node must be equivalent to the sum of currents flowing out of the node. And the reason for that is quite simple. At any given time, or at any given time period, the total amount of charges must stay constant. If Kirchhoff's first law would not hold up, you would have a situation where charges would appear out of nowhere, or where charges would disappear into nowhere. And that's obviously a violation of the conservation of charges. And in this regard, the sum of currents that come in must be the same as the sum of currents that come out of a node. Mathematically speaking, that law is expressed by this equation. The sum of all i's, of all currents, flowing in, is equal to the sum of all currents flowing out. And if we have this circuit with one node and four wires and four currents, i1, i2, i3 and i4, that equation can be expressed this way, i1 plus i2 the inflowing currents is equal to I3 plus I4. And I3 and I4 are the currents that flow out of the node. That statement can be rearranged into I1 plus I2 minus I3 minus I4 is equal to zero, which again is obvious because the inflowing currents and the outflow, uh, outflowing currents must cancel out as far as their magnitude at a node. If you're wondering what this law is good for, it can actually help you calculate currents and voltages in more complex circuits that include several meshes, nodes and branches. Actually, besides the Kirchhoff's first law, there is also a second law, and that law will be covered in one of the next videos. Now we're gonna apply Kirchhoff's first law on an example. We have this partial electric circuit with three resistors and two nodes. As you can see, the two nodes are directly connected with each other, which makes them a super node. And we have five currents, I1 through I5, and four of these currents are known in, in their magnitude. These are I2, I3, I4, and I5, while the current I1 which flows through this resistor is unknown and needs to be calculated. Before we begin, let me state an important piece of information. The orange arrows that you see here, they represent the assumed directions of current. They do not represent the actual directions of electrons flowing through the circuit. So, as a matter of fact, if you have a sub-circuit like this, usually you don't know where the electrons come from and where they flow to. So all you can do is make assumptions as far as directions of current. And if the magnitude of your current is positive, then you assume that the current actually flows in the assumed direction. If the value of your current is negative, as it is the case for I4 and I5, then the current flows against the assumed direction. Later on in this course, you will learn how to determine the actual direction of electric current. Here is our supernode, and we assume that the current I5 flows into that supernode, and that the currents I1, I2, I3, and I4 flow out of the supernode. Again, remember that this is just an assumption. It doesn't necessarily reflect the real direction of electric current. So, having our five currents and having the set assumption, we can go ahead and state the necessary equation that represents Kirchhoff's first law. And that equation is I5, which flows into the supernode, minus I4, minus I3, minus I2, and minus I1 is equal to zero. 
And again, that's because we have assumed that I5 is the only inflowing current while all the other currents flow out of the supernode. And that equation can now be arranged, be rearranged as I1 is equal to minus I2 minus I3 minus I4 plus I5. And now it's just a matter of plugging the known currents into the variables. So we get I1 is equal to minus 3 amps minus 2 amps plus 2 amps minus 2 amps is equal to minus 5 amps. So minus 5 amps is the current flowing through this resistor and because the magnitude of the current is negative that means that the direction of current flows against the assumed direction. Again, you don't yet know the real direction of electric current, you just know that the current I1 flows against the assumed direction. And now we're going to move forward to the second example. What I said previously about Kirchhoff's first law, that the sum of inflowing currents must be equal to the sum of outflowing currents, does not necessarily always apply to a node, but also to electric subcircuits or to electrical components. So we do have an electric subcircuit in our example, which consists of four resistors and two ampere meters, and the wisdom that what comes in must come out also applies to subcircuits or to individual components. So we have five currents, four of which are known, and one of them is unknown, and we want to calculate the magnitude of that current using Kirchhoff's first law. The currents of which we have information about their magnitude are I1, I2, I3, and I5. And the only unknown current is I4. To set up the equation for Kirchhoff's first law, and to do it correctly, we need to ask ourselves which currents do flow into the subcircuit and which currents flow out. And if we look at the subcircuit and the arrows, we can see that the currents I1, I2, I3 and I4 flow in. So they are considered positive in our equation and the current I5 flows out of the subcircuit. And that means that we're going to set up the equation as I1 plus I2 plus I3 plus I4 minus I5 is equal to zero. So again, I1 through I4 are positive because these currents flow into the subcircuit and the current I5 flows out of it. So if we rearrange this equation into I4, we're going to get I4 is equal to minus I1 minus I2 minus I3 plus I5. And now let's plug the values for the currents into the equation. We get I4 is equal to minus 2 amps, because I1 is 2 amps, so minus I1 means that we have to write down minus 2 amps. Now, minus minus is plus, so I2 is minus 3 amps, and minus minus 3 amps is going to be plus 3 amps. And then minus 2 amps plus 3 amps. And the sum of these currents is equal to 2 amps. So the current I4 that flows into the circuit is equal to 2 amps. 
finally, here's one tip for you. If you're not sure about whether your calculated value is correct, you can simply plug that value into the initial equation and check whether the initial equation is equal to zero or not. If the equation is equal to zero, that means that you did your math correctly, and if not, then you should check for the setup of your equation with regard to the inflowing and the outflowing currents, and you should also check your signage as far as the algebra of the equation. All right, I'm gonna sign off now, and I'll see you in a little bit where I will discuss Kirchhoff's second law.